Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Yoga Vasishta. Now we're going to talk about aging. Boyhood has scarcely lost its boyishness when it is overtaken by youth, which is soon followed by a ruthless old age that devours the other two. Old age withers the body like frost freezing a lake of lilies. It drives away the beauty of the body like a storm does autumn clouds. It pulls down the body like a current carries away a tree from the bank. An old man with his limbs slackened and worn out by age, his body weakened by infirmity, is treated by women as a useless beast. Old age drives away a man's good sense, just like a stepmother drives away a good wife. A man in doddering old age is ridiculed as an imbecile by his own sons and servants, and even by his wife, friends, and relations. The body overtaken by old age becomes as pale and battered as a lotus flower beaten by frost becomes withered and shattered. As the Ganges upsets a neighboring tree by its rapid course, so old age destroys the body as the current of our life runs fast to decay. Old age takes as much delight in devouring our youthful bloom as a cat does feeding on a mouse. Decrepitude raises its ominous hoarse sound of coughing in the body like a jackal sending forth her hideous cry in the forest. Old age is an inner flame that consumes the living body like a wet log of wood, which thereupon emits its hissing sounds of hard breathing and sends up the gloomy fumes of sorrow and sighs. <laughs> Old age, like a juggling girl, struts on three legs at the sound of coughing and whiffing, beating like a kettle drum on both sides. The tuft of gray hairs on the head of an aged body represents a fly whisk fastened to the top of a handle of white sandalwood, serving to welcome the despot of death. As hoary age makes his advance, like moonlight over the body, he calls forth hidden death to come out of it, as moonlight makes water lilies unfold their buds. Again, as the whitewash of old age whitens the outer body, so debility, diseases, and dangers become its inmates in the inner apartment. The extinction of being is preceded by old age. What then is the good of this miserable life, which lives subject to old age? Senility is irresistible in this world, and it defies all efforts to avoid or overcome it. So this is the destination of materialistic life. If one is identified with the body, old age is especially horrible because one thinks of the body as I, myself. And when it begins losing its functions, becoming weak and so forth, one thinks this is happening to me. But one should look on the body like a pack animal or like a vehicle. It's simply something to get us across the ocean of birth and death. So one should not be terribly distressed at the onset of old age. Rather, one should look at it as an opportunity that death is coming. So this is a reminder to get my house in order. If I have been neglecting my spiritual life, now is the time to double down and make sure that I'm advanced enough in meditation to deal with it. So what is death? Huh? Really, death is simply leaving this body and becoming a disembodied spirit, leaving form and going into formlessness leaving materiality and going into spirituality. Now, of course, if we are uncomfortable 
with formlessness. Uh, if we haven't cleaned our house, if our mind is a mess, if we're full of anxiety and fear, then the prospect of living in that space is, is frightening. So we should take every step. As soon as we are aware that death is coming, in other words, as soon as we become intelligent, we should live our life in such a way that we are prepared for it. Because death can happen any time. But death preceded by old age is especially scary because we have to deal with the debility of an aging body. So, of course, this is not easy. If one is subject to material pride and egotism, then having the body become degenerate is very humbling. Huh? So, actually, we should become humble beforehand. Then the body being deprived of its youthful functions won't affect us. How does one become humble? How does one deal with the terror of old age? Well, again, one has to realize I'm not this body. And the best way to do that is through meditation. Simply reading about it or hearing about it isn't enough. We need real experience of not being the body. And that's best done through deep meditation. The Buddha's instructions on meditation of the eight jhanas. Jhana is a Pali word, which is a transformation of the Sanskrit word dhyana. And dhyana means meditation. Just like in the Eightfold Yoga system, you have yama, niyama, asana, pranayama. Okay, and this is, these are fairly familiar. But the next step is pratyahara, means withdrawal of the senses from their objects. In other words, introversion. Now, in our culture, we are subjected to a lot of conditioning to produce compulsive extroversion. In other words, we are rewarded for being extroverted and punished for being introverted. So, because of this, most people are habituated to constant extroversion. But that will not help you at the time of death. That will not help you during old age. So, it's good to begin in as early as possible in life to develop a habit of introversion. Cutting off the senses from their objects. Pratyahara. And what's the next stage? Dharana. Dharana means concentration. So in the beginning of meditation, one should concentrate on a symbol, a sound, a thought, a vision, like a form of God or something like that, or anything that you find attractive. Okay? And that should not be material, but spiritual. So the form of God or the form of one's guru or some spiritual form with a spiritual significance. And that should be the object of one's meditation. But as meditation develops, one should enter into emptiness, no form the absence of form, and then realize that no matter how big a space of emptiness you can imagine, that space is full of consciousness. Your consciousness. <laughs> you can imagine a space that is so big that the whole universe becomes merely an insignificant point and then disappears. So vast a space we can imagine. And yet, that whole space is filled with our consciousness. Otherwise, how do we know that the universe has disappeared? It's so insignificant. And that 
emptiness, that nothingness. Such a huge, empty nothingness that we're not really sure whether we're perceiving or not perceiving because there's nothing to perceive. Are we percipient or not? Hard to know. In that state, something will happen. I'm telling you. <laughs> what is that? The spontaneous manifestation or revelation of Brahman. And Brahman is bliss. Brahman is enlightenment. Brahman is nirvana. Brahman is self-realization. So by entering into emptiness, one counteracts the influence of the body. Whether the body is young or old, healthy or aged, strong or weak, huh? no matter what it is, one has a refuge in emptiness. One has a balm in nothingness that can soothe the worst suffering. Uh, but one has to cultivate withdrawing consciousness from the senses, withdrawing the senses from their objects and entering into a state completely separate from the body. That's advanced meditation. That's what you should be aiming for in your practice. If you do that, then old age can have no effect on you. I feel like a young man. I feel like a teenager sometimes. And I have a lot of fun. Making these videos is really fun for me. And the reason is that I retain my bodily airs in a state of quietude for many hours a day. For many hours a day, I practice sitting meditation with pranayama, where I withdraw the mind from the senses and the breath becomes quiet all by itself. And in this state, my full energy is collected and I can direct it however I want. So that's why I never get sick, even though I'm 70 years old. And that's why I always feel like a young man. <laughs> so I am not worried about old age. Well, wait a minute, I'm 70 and I feel great. So why should I be worried about getting older? It may happen that this body will fall down. It's certain that this body will eventually die. But I'm not worried about it because I know I am free. I know where I'm going after this. I'm going to be a free spirit. Huh? I could go anywhere to the Himalayas, to the sun, to the moon or any other planet. Or I can go beyond space and time to emptiness, my refuge, to Brahman, the universal consciousness, the life force that penetrates all, that is everywhere and in everything, and is our real self. Om Tat Sat. Om Harihi Om. Karunar Navamai Kardakadinalgum Aruna Chalashivam Yidam